When you think of Metal Slug, it looks something like this. Nothing about this setup screams turn-based tactical roguelike. While this might feel left of field, it could always be lefter of field. Did you know we almost got a Metal Slug MMO at one point? Metal Slug to me is one of those core game franchises. I remember playing some version of the game on one of those dodgy plug and play machines back in the late 90s, early 2000s. So while I, personally, have never pirated a video game, my parents definitely have. There's just something homely and comforting about Metal Slug, at least to me. That retro art style invoking Saturday morning cartoons, simple controls, understood instantly, and overall games which are generally fun. It's simple yet challenging, but in a totally understandable way. Now with Tactics landing squarely in my wheelhouse of roguelikes, this is an excellent chance to revisit the series that I have such fond memories of. In Metal Slug Tactics, you take control of a squad of three members of the Peregrine Falcons, with the ultimate objective of defeating General Morden and the NWO. I'm sure there's someone out there who can give you a detailed insight into each of the characters, but that ain't me. Each character has a particular set of skills, weapons and talents to tackle the waves of enemies and the various objectives the game throws at you. Mechanically at its core, it's a bit of XCOM, a bit of Into the Breach, but where it diverges from these games is with its sync mechanic. When performing an attack in the range of your teammates, they will join in on the attack, turning what would be a merely damaging attack into a deadly one. This makes positioning for these sinks one of the keys to combat. Surround your enemies, leave them feeling like <laughs> I'm in danger! This might mean moving all your units at once, or keeping them close, attacking with one and then spreading out for some other targets. The other keys to success are dodging, defense, and adrenaline. In some other tactical turn-based combat systems, moving to the maximum of your movement range is usually discouraged by it tends to sacrifice your attack that turn to perform that exaggerated action. In Metal Slug Tactics, this isn't only allowed or encouraged, it's necessary. The further you move, the more adrenaline and dodge you build up. Adrenaline is used for special actions, and dodge, well, it allows you to dodge. This movement system really encourages, well, movement. Hunkering down in a corner of the map and waiting for enemies to come to you just doesn't work, and it takes a bit of time to get this old playstyle out of your system. You need to be aggressive, but still tactical, to complete your objectives. Defense is exactly what you'd expect, but deployed a little differently. These tiles provide cover for both you and your enemies, but works regardless of whether you've flanked your foes or, God forbid, they've flanked you. This is a bit of a shame as outflanking enemies and hitting them in their weak spot is one of my favorites. This core gameplay is fun, the combat is intuitive, once you're used to the level of aggression and the sync mechanic, the game is really about executing consistently across a run and playing the objective. But once you have this combat system down, you've pretty much beaten the game. From here the game is relatively easy, plan out your moves carefully, understand the common pitfalls, and keep the space and pace approach, and you're pretty much unbeatable. You'll know which missions you'll have to throw your team into the meat grinder to win, and which ones require more thoughtful planning. The game, across all of its regions, only has a few unusual mechanics it throws at you. One of the enemies essentially powers you up. What's that about? The bosses are all visually distinct, straight out of the Metal Slug universe, which will lure you into a false sense of variety, but soon you'll notice that most boss fights devolve into the same rhythm. Defeat some mobs, 
make an opening for an attack on the boss, be ready for some damage areas, some undodgeable attacks, some arena changing moves, or all three. And that's pretty much it. The last boss introduces some fire and some enemy spawns to destroy, but the fire only damages you if you stand in it. So if that damages you, that, that's on you. <laughs> you deserve to get burned. The spawns have five health and give you two turns to act, so both are pretty much a non-factor. The higher levels do ramp up the difficulty further, but only really to the point where I start to feel challenged in the end boss, when the game is pitting you against the boss and multiple tanks. If you're a seasoned veteran of strategy games, you'll want to get through to these higher levels as soon as possible to feel challenged, but having to play through the easy modes to get there, you'll be retracing your steps pretty quickly. Four easy to conquer biomes is not enough variety for a game that expects you to play through it multiple times. Especially when two of those biomes are visually very similar. And so to tie into our title for today, it does feel like Baby's first tactical squad game. Easy to learn, easy to master. If I had a son or daughter and they watched me play XCOM and wanted to get into it, other than some controller swapping, I would give them this to play. But it doesn't have the level of punishment that usually comes with a roguelike or a lot of squad based games. It's way too forgiving, with so many lives doled out, and with you and your squad only fully wiping if you're all dead at the same time. Ensure one of your team is always safe and you'll breeze through the harder sections. If I wasn't producing a review, I would have beaten it once, maybe twice, and been just as satisfied as I was after the additional runs I went through on the harder difficulties. This game is fun, don't get me wrong, I just, I don't see why it's a roguelike, I think that's the main thing. I feel like maybe the roguelike element is there to kind of disguise the fact that it is quite a small game in terms of maps and general, well, length of the game. You, you can beat the whole game, you can see all the content it has other than maybe facing a few tanks in just one or two runs, like three hours of content. I can only really recommend this game to someone who's a completionist because the only way you're going to get your money's worth is by going out of your way to unlock all the characters. And so then I guess my biggest issue is the price point. This game, while not the price of a AAA game, it's more expensive than your average indie game, but provides far less content than your average indie game. So yeah, you're really just paying for the premium of the Metal Slug brand, a brand which I don't think is worth that much money. I don't think this game is worth that much money. At the end of the day, there are, there are better experiences at a lower price point. So beyond the general easiness to the game, what other issues are there? Well, mostly on the technical standpoint. I straight up lost a Metal Slug mid-boss battle one time for no explicable reason. I had a weird glitch where I kamikaze one of my characters into a group, only for him to get stuck between both dead and alive at the same time. Some actions seem to break, visual glitches are common, especially between boss set pieces. I had a couple of crashes, nothing too major. There's just some tightening up that the game could do with here and there. It does, however, run really well on Steam Deck and an ideal game for on the go. It's not a battery hog either. We aren't talking Slay the Spire levels of battery efficiency, but I played while traveling the whole length of the country on a train and it managed no bother. So something to bear in mind. So that's kind of all I have to say on Metal Slug Tactics. It's a fun game, it's great to revisit a franchise after all these years, but this game comes up short for me. Emphasis on short, there's just not enough here. It all works mechanically and has some great mechanics, but when I start retreading old ground so quickly to get to the difficulty that actually challenges me, I burn through my interest really quickly. It feels like it wants to be a roguelike to justify replaying levels. In a roguelike, you end up replaying levels because you lost last time, not because you've beaten it already. I think I died in my first run, won my next three through the three progressively harder difficulties, and then really couldn't be bothered to play the same game again for a fourth time on the absolute hardest. 
So for a newcomer to the genre, sure, it isn't a bad starting point, it has some fresh and fun mechanics for those who already enjoy Tactical Squad games, but there's just not enough game here to justify dropping 20 odd bucks on it, at least not in my opinion. The Metal Slug is iconic, but what is your favourite video game tank? Let me know in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope like me you're happy to see a new Metal Slug game, even if it doesn't quite hit all the notes. Next time, I, I thought I knew what we were going to do next time, I'm not 100% sure. Very small break between last video and this video, I'm back, we're making videos, we're going. Do follow me on like Blue Sky and Discord and Twitch, we, we're playing a lot of this game on Twitch actually, so you might give me a little hint as to what we're doing next. Um, yeah, hit me up in the comments, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you, well, next time. Bye!